Let's go recording. Hello everyone. So here we are with Will Devlin from the small holding, as it says on your t-shirt, yeah. and the curlew as well, because you're actually in the curlew wearing a small holding t-shirt, which I think is very clever. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually realise you were doing that? <laughs> no, to be honest, I wear the I have a I've got hundreds of them, so I either pick up a small holding t-shirt or a curly t-shirt in the morning. <laughs> so But that's worked out really well because you can see the curly behind you. So yeah. There's obviously no one in there because we're not open. Obviously not. No, we are closed. So, yeah. but yeah. you uh, opened the curlew how uh, just before lockdown, opened, wasn't it? It was about a year ago. Uh, so we opened on the nineteenth of Feb. So over a year. Um, opened on the nineteenth of February last year, and then we closed around the same time in March twenty second or something like that. Um, it was it was emotional. It was a bit of a, bit of a strange time for everyone um but yeah we got through it first lockdown reopened in the summer had a really really good summer i think every hospitality business did it was amazing um and we ran right through till early december um obviously november we were closed as well there was a national lockdown um for hospitality i think it's non-essential retail as well and then um yeah we managed for a couple of weeks in december and then we got closed down again just before christmas so it was a bit yeah we did well didn't we we managed to get a, an event in a live event in did, yeah, yeah in between lockdown one and lockdown two yeah felt which was super in. cool <laughs> and i really loved it so the reason i'm interviewing you today really is because actually you're you know you're a pure patron you um support us and our artists and that started when you opened the small holding and you, we'd obviously had a relationship before then because you'd done some private catering for me for a surrealist exhibition. Yes. Which yeah. was well, super that, cool. That was a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, that's got to be about five years ago now. Probably something like that. Yeah, when yeah. we were doing pop up. So, yeah, so we were doing the no fixed abode pop ups where we were kind of all over trying to have fun get connected with people so work with the farmers and stuff in the different regions and and yeah kind of trial our plan for what would turn into a small holding world we domination know. yeah yeah basically well. trial your plan for world domination <laughs> tried it out went yeah. quite well what people seem to like it <laughs> yeah, absolutely. now yeah. take over the world exactly yeah well that was well this this little part of the world <laughs> yeah so you opened the small holding Two so that years. was April 2018. So three, nearly three years. Nearly three years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so that so, event definitely was five years ago then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was a yeah, it was a long time ago. But we've been doing yeah, we've been doing bits. So the small holding since April, and then the curlew since February. So we're coming up to a year, a year anniversary. But we only really cooked and traded for six months last year. So don't worry, 2022 is going to be amazing. <laughs> It's going to be amazing. Up for 2023. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I came and saw you because obviously we're friends and we chatted about the art and it really having art in the restaurants by local artists really fits into your ethos yeah. of local sustainable supporting everyone locally. So can you give us an overview on that and your vision for well, it makes, your group? Yeah, it makes complete sense. So we, we've obviously our industry food and, and drinks um but that doesn't just stop at the sort of the produce that we have on the menu or, or, the, or the drinks list which are all from individuals you know people that are sort of artisan people that are doing things the right way we see you know in a sustainable way of producing their cheese and milk or meat or wine or beer whatever it might be and it, it's only a natural kind of flow on from that that we that we wanted to make sure that the rest of the restaurant and the dining space was was reflective of that as well so even from the potter that makes some plates for us to some wood carving and obviously the art just follows suit it makes it just makes complete sense it sinks in really well with what we're doing um to be able to i say play a part but really all we're doing is is using we have a space and we have people that that come to to enjoy our space and why not be working alongside um other producers of, of, of art and sculptures that are in our area um, and connect with them because it, yeah, it goes hand in hand really to, to be able to, to showcase other people's sort of um, profession within our building. You know, it's, it's, it's a, pl it's a, it's a privilege really for us to be able to kind of have those, the artists engagement with, um, with our diners, you know, and have that, 
set up for the for the month or for the couple of months or however long we we work with the artist to really kind of um add that as an extra sort of string to our bow as you come for a dining experience and um, also so it helps our guests it also gets our team a little bit more engaged with what's happening um and hopefully yeah we can be that place um for the artist to get spotted and just bring that awareness around really I think that's it isn't it it's like ev everything amplifies it raises the vibration yeah. of everything and everything amplifies doesn't it and if you i mean i've worked um, in this industry for a long time and, and we've often we're often approached by restaurants saying oh can you bring an artist and you go um for what purpose why yeah for what purpose do you want it and if it's decoration then that doesn't amplify it doesn't add to the dynamic of what the restaurant is doing. And it does definitely doesn't help the artist and nothing sells. You can tell when it doesn't work. And that's what we, so we have a lot of, in what we do, like the conversations I have with the team, and especially like the rest of the management head chefs and whatever, we, we always come back to this purpose. Like what's the, so any decision we make, whether it's a, a dish or a style of service or where we move the tables and chairs, like what's the reason behind it? Like what? Why are we, why are we doing that? And, you know, and sometimes there's a lot of times you do look at things you're like, that the, why did we do that? Or why did we buy that? Or what's, what's yeah. that dish on the menu for? What is the purpose? It doesn't make any sense. And for me, something like just having de decor decorative art is in, oh, we better put some pictures on the wall. That, that's, that's, there's no purpose behind that. There's, there's no, obviously we're lucky to be connected um, with amazing artists and it isn't, it isn't easy not everyone's maybe in that uh, has that luxury but i think it's about proactively hunting down and, and making those connections so that everything that's in the detail there's a reason why it's there it's not just our restaurants are supposed to have some painting the pictures up let's just pop some up so that again sometimes guests may come and they don't even blink an eye and they're just thinking, oh it's nice in here they don't know re really why um, why they think it's nice and then it's not until they start looking around and they see maybe that's the a painting on a wall and there's there's a person behind that there's a person behind that art and there's a reason why they've created it and it tells a story and it's just adding layers of experience for us so yeah purpose why is the question we ask ourselves all the time I think that's that's a really big lesson for everyone to learn isn't it it's like having clarity of your intention so your clarity of your intention is it's sustainable and it's local and it's ethical mm. and that you want to amplify what you do so that it's good for the world and mm. then understanding testing every decision you make against that strategic purpose yeah exactly that exactly that and that's what we spend a lot of energy on obviously creating the the, the formula that is the restaurant is mm. um is something we've done and myself and the team uh, for years that's our profession that's what we do mm. and that's to a certain level and that's the standard that we work to is there but what really makes things in, exciting and interesting and, and that buzz of moving forward is the is the why question that's something that we have more control over and it's like we can actually part, carve our own path by asking that question but why do we do that you know and that's the difference <laughs> Busy man, I will. Busy man. Trying to turn it off. You know? People always wanted to contact you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's exactly it. That's the, it comes back down to that purpose and the reason why. Because I think that it, it almost, it's a massive challenge as soon as you start asking that question to things. Because it reali we realise how much stuff that we don't get involved with. Do you know, you're kind of like, well, we just take that for granted. But the whys and the and the, the extra layer is so much more unique and rewarding and on a personal level for all of the team that work together. And when we had uh, have events um, with you guys and when the artists come in and, and they can make that connection, they're growing as well as a, as a person, as a team. And they've got a little bit more um, more about them and they understand things that they're, they're educating themselves. We're pushing each other forward, basically. Yeah, um, the more you learn, the more you grow. Yeah. The more, the more you, you grow, realize, you know, I think that's the, the further other thing. you go. <laughs> yeah. More, but the more you learn, the more you realize how you don't know. You know, it's like mm. everything from that sustainability side. It's um, working. You know, which who's our energy producer? How much energy of that's renewable? We're now into a producer that's eighty percent renewable energy. So, but those kind of things and questioning the containers that come into the restaurant, whether they're necessary. Why do we need to accept? 
uh, a big lots of cardboard boxes where we get our wine delivery why can't we have a reusable box that we give back to them and back and forth because we get the same kind of deliveries for it's, it's about that waste element as well it's about the purpose of why we're doing it who, who we can work with in a local region to support the economy around here as well because our making a choice of where we spend our pound as well as a, an average consumer you know just looking into paying a little bit more attention maybe to some stuff i think makes you realize how sort of free we take a lot of things and like you said just hanging a picture on the wall because you should have pictures like exactly it's, it's not intentional is it no and it's just again we pay attention to the tables and what chairs and how they feel and the sit everything is important Obviously, there are lots and lots and lots of little things that are done well to make an learning experience um, what it is. Mm. But um, yeah, paying attention to all of those things is just, uh, we get a buzz out of it. We like taking things to that kind of next layer. And trying Which to is learn. why we, we really enjoy working with you. And, uh, when I said to you, let's put up a hanging system so that we don't, we're not putting nails in the wall and we're not constantly, you know, Backing having out. to redo things and get paint in and decorate. And let's, um, we bring the, the artwork in so we minimize the packaging and yeah, we cool. make sure that um, when we have buyers come through and we've sold quite a lot of work, we always have had, we've had a, Pure have had a, a, a long term relationship with the Curlew even prior to yeah, your yeah. current residency. And we've always had really good buyers um, coming through that location. But you and I, we, when we have the conversations, we always say, Let's not just pick it because it looks right in here. Let's pick something that's a little bit edgy. There's a that make people look. A hundred percent, and that's the thing. We're not. Um, I think if you were to to place art in a restaurant, then what you're sorry. That's all right. You'd place. I'm trying to turn it off on silent. <laughs> things come through my phone, uh, my <laughs> laptop. I'm very sorry. Um, when if you were to place art in a restaurant because you want the art to complement your restaurant then you're so restricted of what you can and can't have and what you do and don't do, then it's, it's kind of, um, again, it's about that purpose. Whereas the art on the walls or the artists that we choose, nine times out of 10, I got zero to do with the restaurant. Is that right? Is that okay to yeah. say? They're just, yeah, absolutely. They're, like, if anything, like you say, when we meet some of the artists, we're like, they're cool. Like, I love what you do. And I love, even the process of how, not necessarily the subject, but the process of the creation, is exciting do you know so that's mm. the purpose to get it there's a reason it's there it's not um not putting pretty pictures up that are just sort of mimicking images of food or, or something that you'd expect to see in a restaurant these are really quality pieces of really interesting exciting artists and engaging. And that, yeah and that's what you're supposed to do they're supposed to make you look like wow well, like what is i'm that? thinking about Gigi when we put Gigi's work up yeah. in the small holding <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, some of the guys were like, wow. And they're like, um, what do you think about this? And I was just like, do you know what? And it was funny because one of, one of the guys didn't like it. They're like, oh, I'm not sure about that. I think it might, it's a bit sort of like in your face. And um, other people were like, I love it. Like, it's sort of like really makes you think. And, and, and all, all of a sudden, there was five or six of us stood around talking about it. And um, someone was just like, yeah, um, to be honest, I don't think anyone's going to like it. And I just laughed and I said, it's not about that. You look, we're in the middle of our day, busy, busy running around and we've stopped and we've discussed this for about 25 minutes. Yeah. And you love it. You don't like it. You don't mind it. You think it's great. You think you don't want to see it. Just, whatever it might be, like, that's what it's about. Absolutely. That, that's the, it's just an engagement. That's the, it's just adds again, like another depth. And as I say, if you're not interested in it, you can carry on. There's plenty of other things to do, but it brings a conversation around the table which is absolutely just and that's that's why it's there and picasso i think uh, i'm going to misquote this really badly because obviously <laughs> i haven't got it in front of me okay. picasso said that the biggest danger lies in having um, art being there for decoration it's meant to be there to disrupt yeah. and to create a moment where you, where you stop and yeah. and you have a conversation you don't have to like it it's not about that it's not about like it, it's almost um I don't know it's not there to obviously you want to enjoy it. that's the, the idea of of creating anything you want people to enjoy it um unless you're unless you're obviously down the road of disturbance but there's a point to, to be said that um it's an attraction that you, you can you can involve involve yourself in or not involve yourself in like do you know what i mean it's yeah. it's there if you want to 
get into it and and develop that conversation and have an opinion. And if you don't, it's it's it, they're not um, yeah, it's not in your face like it's going to not forced to. Are you going to ruin your lunch? Do you know what I mean? But, um, <laughs> I but, 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 but the the thing is as well, it's just you know we we get it. But maybe that's another connection on another level. I think when, when we create dishes or f- food or even different wine profiles and stuff like that, it's amazing to see that some people are in love with a dish and it changes them. They're like, oh my god, like that was just a complete like sensation and other people are like didn't get it category yeah. like not a fat i'll never eat that again and i'll be happy and it's the same dish and we haven't done anything wrong they haven't done anything different and it's the same same principle that 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 some of the things that we have on the menu may be quite provocative with offal or we have wood ants on that are great like it's great lemon acidity and stuff and some people just they won't eat that no i am not eating ants and then someone else <laughs> It's like, I'll give it a go. And they eat them and then they're converted. And they're like, just try them. Seriously, just try them. Just try them. Just try them. Because the acid in them is like super sort of citrusy, lemon zest. And they're incredible. But there's those kind of um, things that we run through with the menu or natural wines and organic sort of quite wild yeasted um, wines that are complex and, and not the norm. So they're, they're a conversation piece. And, and I say, that's, that's what we do as a person as a, and a restaurant and as a team. So that um, having those engaging art and interesting, I wouldn't want it any other way just to, if, if, if someone said, what, where's that painting from? And, or what, why have you got it there? And there wasn't a reason I was just like, well, I don't know, cause we need to put something on the walls. Yeah. It just, it almost flops everything that we're doing. Into, it everything down, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it's all just like, down. oh, okay. So you don't be like, you don't really care about that like yeah it kind of brings down the integrity of course and yeah. the whole authenticity of what you're doing and it was wonderful to see that the authenticity that you know i really admire about you know your ethos and the the reason why you know i stay engaged with you and, and we work together um has just recently been completely um rewarded with this brand new green michelin star so tell us about that it's so exciting yeah uh, do you know well it was amazing i think that so it was something that we heard that it happened last year in uh, in france michelin released the first new accolade which is a green michelin star for um gastronomy sustainable gastronomy so the cooking is obviously a good standard but it's about that level of care and attention into how and where and why you do things so what having worked in michelin style restaurants for, for, for a while and in different kind of places a lot of that michelin star thing used to annoy me and, and quite a few other people i know where, where you know the everything was imported or this was you know this is the best tuna from japan and this is like the, the finest caviar and um, and there was lots of waste and there was lots of trim. We were always just trying to get the, this portion bit and the rest of it would go for in the bin or staff food or you no, know, it was, we only trimmed the, the nicest bits. And if anything's not the right shape or it was, it was all not good enough for a Michelin star restaurant. And, and I always thought it was weird. I thought it was super odd that we were you know, shipping in vegetables from all over the place because they were tiny. And we were only using French ducks because they're the best. And, and it's not true. And I think in, in, if you go down that next layer of, asking that question, yeah, but why? Then you pay a little bit of attention to start finding and connecting with these people that are producing food. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, you're really sustainable. And we're like, well, we're just doing what I think feels right. Um, and and Michelin has obviously seen that movement. And obviously there's a, there's a huge pressure on um, reducing waste and carbon and et cetera, which we, yeah, which we're 100% on board with. Um, but for them to now recognize that in a cooking award or like a, a restaurant award it, for me like it blows my mind because like that's exactly what we should be celebrating and holding in a high regard um is is how how your decisions impact the planet obviously and your local area so if you can be we should be rewarding good practices and sustainability and reducing consumer waste and food waste um and spending our money because we have to buy food as well as growing our own but buying our beef from a farm that 
farm sustainably, you know, and they're regenerating the land and they're, they're beneficial to the, the greater good. That's the decision we should be made. And, and it's so nice to see it being rewarded. I mean, we know this is how we never set out to get any awards. We don't really sort of care about that. We care about what we're doing, but for an award to be um, created and then I think there's 16 restaurants in, in England with the green star. Um, and there's hundreds with, with, with the kind of red star. So it just shows, I think we're a bit out of balance and maybe hopefully it, hopefully it does become something that people aspire to, to get, or at least pay attention to and think, yeah, actually, you know, do we use loads of cling film and do we need to, you know, do we need to vacuum pack everything? You know, should I ask the butcher where the farm is that we get our beef from and what sort of quality it is and how they look after the lab? All of those kind of things like, it's just it's it's the start of something that's I think I think really exciting. I absolutely agree. I think it's so we're exciting. We're to be involved in it, really. As I say, we're we're lucky. We're in the, in the middle of nowhere, not in London, not in a bit. Obviously, we've got a farm which helps, um, and we just do what we do, and we question everything um, about why do we need that do we need all these plastic milk bottles or can we get a milk churn and we can get that delivered from the dairy and we can pour it straight out of the churn it does, doesn't need to go through all these processes can we reduce that down because um it, it it makes a difference it makes a huge difference and it, but if we can all do it we're really small really small restaurants small holding we've got six tables currently we've got 11 do you know in the grand scheme of things we're like really insignificant but if a huge global high-end sort of like aspirational company like michelin can sort of see that and start putting it forward as a hopefully as a goal to sort of to hit them and hopefully chefs and restaurants are like i like the sound of that green star what do yeah. like they get involved how do we do so and it's not so that everyone wins an award it's so that everyone changes their mentality and everyone starts focusing even a little bit um then it, it'll make a huge difference over the next couple of years Mm. And you've got young children, a young child. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so it's really important, isn't it? It's that why, the clarity of the why and the purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, as you say, a massive brand like Michelin suddenly, you know, standing up and recognizing this, one yeah. would hope would disrupt the market and therefore create yeah. a, a, a momentum that is so required. As we come out of lockdown, you hope that people will not be desperate and not just kind of rush at it but we'll think hang on a minute what have i learned from this experience yeah. and where do i go where do i spend my money and where do i who's sort of moving on the right track and i, and I get I, what i don't want is this sustainability thing to turn into like every all of a sudden everyone's marketing stuff like like that kind of organic boom yeah. you know, everyone's like yeah. this is now organic and you're yeah. like and like vegan food was like that for a period of time where they're labeling watermelons as vegan and you're like <laughs> like sorry i don't understand it's a watermelon <laughs> you know what i mean it, it's, but it's true they're kind of like it's a cool buzzword and and sustainability is not a cool buzzword it's something that we have to do it's critical and I, and I think until you until people open their eyes to how much waste they create then they won't see that but as soon as you do with this heightening awareness people might think twice about so where do we go to eat? Do we stay a little bit local in the vicinity or do we go and make a bit more of a trip of it? So we're not back and forth as much. Mm -hmm. Do we go, do we kind of um, question like things when you're eating, do you know, hopefully chefs and then pushed into the way of, of being able to cook a little bit more sustainably. Cause that's another thing. If you want to go out and get fish, chips and mushy peas all year, then, and most chefs will just won't want to use the marrow fat tin. So they're using these, fresh peas and they're importing them from Italy when they're in season or they go to Spain and they come from Turkey. So, cause you can get everything all year round and making those choices that you don't, you know, put strawberries on your Valentine's menu, for example, yeah. that's that. And then people shouldn't expect that. That's what I'm saying. I think sometimes yeah. it's like the chicken and the egg, the chef's like, Oh, I don't know. Like people like mangoes in their dessert, but then, the, the consumer should be like, okay, do you know, in the winter months, we're going to eat a lot of apples and pears and some frozen berries and stuff. So like, it's about, it's a double, it's a team effort, isn't it? Everyone's got to. Yeah. We have been so spoiled, haven't we? We've well, been so spoiled and we need to get our mindset around that. Yeah. And I had this conversation with someone the other day when they said, um, we shouldn't be importing stuff like this. We shouldn't be. And do you know what? Like the Great Britain, the empire, we've imported stuff for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So like we stamp our name on a T, do you know, that's important. Mm. There's, 
importing things and globalization has gone too far, but importing things isn't like completely bad. It's just importing highly perishable fresh fruits via air freight and then they go a bit soft and they end up going in the bin anyway, mm. you know, because they're not in season. Like that, that's that's where we need to eliminate. But like things being things being transported when they're necessary it's been happening for a very long time but um you've got, like the, bananas, the, you've got the silk trail haven't you you know yeah, going back and bananas the spice, are the most, um, spice route. bananas are one of the most sustainable <laughs> ship foods ever because they harvest it they ripen on the boat all the way all, all the way over and actually the cut obviously they're still uh, run by a tanker it's better to not eat them but if you're going to think about what sort if you really need that in your diet think about preserving it over the summer when we have all of these mm. amazing berries and fruits in our country you know and then if you if you really really need it then look at making sure that it's from um you know at least a good farm and it's brought in in a good way but pay a bit of attention to it and make sure it doesn't come in big plastic bags that that you then have to just chuck in the bin like yeah, there's yeah there's a there's a lot of work to do on that offer inside isn't there people get yeah if you've got the chance is. you've got the chance and everything in the supermarket is available and it all comes in that pre-packaged stuff then what else do you buy you know it's this it's asking a lot of people but it's more the industry that needs to kind of focus it is the industry but as you quite rightly say it's a partnership between people and industry if we keep insisting that we want cheaper 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 then we reap what we sow don't we it's karma I went through a period of time where I was so fed up with receiving all of my vegetables and fruit in packaging. Mm. Um, I started off by keeping all the packaging and taking it back to the supermarket and giving it to their customers. I, I didn't buy this, I bought the stuff. Yeah, inside. I don't want this, this is yours. Yeah. I don't want to put it in my recycle bin. That really aggravated them. Yeah. And they did actually then stop, they did provide paper bags. And then I moved over to um, a company called Abel and Cole who deliver in boxes that you can then return the boxes to them and they'll use your boxes over and over again and they only send you um, seasonal vegetables. But we have to intend to do that and we have to be prepared to make the sacrifice in our pocket with the, how much money we're spending. And that's the thing, it's about driving that. So we do the same with our veg boxes. You do a veg box. There's, we don't have any, I don't have a plastic bag making machine, so we don't have any plastic bags. It's simple as that. Everything goes in a box, and then the box we return and, and mm. vice versa. But yeah, it's it's if the cost thing is what's difficult because things grown the right way are now seen or perceived as expensive due to the fact that things grown badly are so cheap, yeah. and that's the thing that it's not that natural organic whatever um, low intervention food is expensive it's it's the price it's always been maybe obviously incremental but the reality is is the, the stuff that's mass produced in a factory effectively is so much cheaper but if you look at the nutrient value and the quality levels they're miles apart so it's almost like you said taking that hit financially but then maybe understanding what you can do with your produce a little bit more and making things work a little bit better for you um, but then that's an into whole education thing and it's into people's time spent in the kitchen at home and everyone runs in really busy lives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it, there's a huge thing there, but taking these small steps for, like you said, questioning why the supermarket feel the need to give you everything in a bag. I don't want it. We do the same thing with our suppliers here. When the, anything turns up, we're working our way out of it. But when anything turns up in a case or a packaging that we don't need, we make sure that, Joe, all of the fish is taken out. We rinse this box out and we give it back to him. Yes. And the fish guy was like, what am I supposed to do with this? I'm like, I don't care. You know, put, mm. put, my, put tomorrow's fish in it. Yeah, you know? but deliver my next order. Big, poly it. big polystyrene box. Every day I throw one of those in the bin. That's, or terrible. that's, been, that's terrible for the like, planet. Like, that is, and I'm a really small restaurant. Mm. So that's happening all over the country and all over the world. Mm. And why are we not just washing it out? Yeah. You know why? Because it doesn't cost anything. I didn't. I didn't have to do it. Like I got it free with my fish. Mm. So the fishmonger's like, well, I don't want to do it. You know, like they, but I have to take that burden and, like you said, throw it in my bin, and mm. it's not the product I wanted. So no, it is. It's it's, 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 it's 
questioning it's challenging isn't it is this i know when we first started the art fairs in 2009 the very first art fair everyone all the artists and when i was quite new to this game you know i'd had a gallery but i hadn't had i'd never run an art fair before Mm. and everyone turns up with all their pictures Mm. in this bubble wrap stuff with sellotape and once we'd unpacked 600 pictures covered in bubble wrap we had this mountain of bubble wrap with bits of sticky tape on it and i was like really this is now, yeah. I, what do i a what how do i deal with this mm. i can't reuse it because i can't unstick the tape and i can't work out oh that was the bit of bubble wrap that went on that picture out of 600 and broken, and yeah and it's ripped etc so we looked in immediately into how we fixed that and we came up with this guy who made these bags called stiffy bags and the industry converted pretty quickly within about a year. We put it mandatory. You're not allowed to deliver anything to us that is in any other packaging apart from these stiffy bags because they're all completely reusable. You put your name on the front of them. They're sized to your artwork. Yeah. We just take the artwork off, hang it in there, and then put it back in if it's not sold. Or if it is sold, sometimes the client wants the stiffy bag because they can store it. Yeah, perfect. And that's, in that. that's but it's taking that step and people like yourself and someone that's just like, no, no. There was so much resistance to it though, because the artists had to pay for the bag. They suddenly realized the value in it after they'd done it. They, it took them about a year though to work out the value in it. Now it's industry standard. Because they were wasting the bubble wrap anyway. So in short term, yeah. you think it's more cost effective, but in long term, it's completely wrong because it's costing you more money in the long term and it's unnecessary waste that we've created. And you know, art has been transported for hundreds and hundreds of years before we had bubble wrap. Before you know we I mean? had bubble wrap, blankets. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is like, there is a better way that it, our sort of human, human race of development and over, over engineer and develop and develop and develop has mm-hmm. obviously brought us into some amazing abilities. But there are also things that are so detrimental that you think, why have we messed this up? Do you know what? How can mm-hmm. we mess up something that's been like the food system that's been with us for ever ever (laughs) ever. um how have we we got this so wrong because we've we've treated it like a another product you know commoditized it yeah i need to build this cheaper where do i go right we're going to take over the rest of this down we're going to cut the forest down we're going to there was right there was um someone's telling me they bought some i won't name the supermarket but they bought some fish and it was frozen fish and it was because I said, like, why are you buying that? Like, do you And they said, Oh, it's just easier because it's all portioned up in backpack bags in another big bag that goes in the freezer. Oh. And I was like, Where's it from? I said, I don't know. I had, a look. I had a look. It was caught in it just said Scandinavia and Norway. So it was around there, you know. So it was caught there. And then it had a sticker saying packed in China. And then it was sold in Kent in Tesco. Sorry, in a supermarket. <laughs> in a supermarket. But you know what? They're all the same. Tesco as the yeah, yeah like, they are all the all same. Now, who is allowing them? Like we are catching fish, shipping them across the world to get processed because it's cheaper, and then freezing them, backpacking them in little bags, and then sending them back to the supermarket. There is no consumer in the world, I guarantee you, that asked for that process to happen. No, they drive doing... it. They drive it through price. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. And, to, and it, it, they're they're profiteering on that fact of the the the. the the world mm. at the, the mercy of that, you know, we're depleting those kind of um, the stocks due to them making a bit of extra cash on saving on processing fees. So anyway, there's just that, that kind of stuff. Is, it's just thinking, isn't it? It's just thinking and questioning and being intentional. If you knew, and that's what I'm saying, they don't make it clear. But if you knew of those, they don't. <laughs> but, but if consumers knew that or they wanted to look at the bank, like, actually, I don't want to do that. And mm. it's that sort of vote with your, your feet thing. It just Vote with your pound, because I can guarantee I eat now. Um, my biggest joy of lockdown is the high street near yeah. where we live, which you know where that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've now got a green grocer. Yeah, we've got a fishmonger. Really yeah. And yeah. I haven't been in a supermarket for a year. Yeah, I, do you know what? I mean, if I don't go there because I don't. I mean, I'm lucky. We grow a lot of veg, and I and I've got great suppliers of meat and fish. Like I know them because of what I do for a job. But 
So they're all for sale for um, for consumers. Uh, Sankey's Fishmongers do a home delivery box. Mm. So you get super fresh fish, exactly what spec you want, and they deliver it to your house. You know, the butchers are doing the same thing, like you just said about veg boxes. Yeah, butcher's yeah. hook in, in our high street. I mean, honestly, and I'm not spending any more money. So no. people say, oh, it's cheaper if I go to... No, I'm sorry, no. I don't agree. I yeah. go to the grocers in the high street, mm. and my mum, who is very money conscious, because obviously she grew up during the war and counts yeah. every penny, she's like, this is incredible. The the quality and the, quality, the fact, the even if the price is the same or a penny more, the quality is always different. Do you know what I mean? The and they last longer. Different. You keep yeah. the vegetable longer. Because um, it hasn't been sat in a warehouse somewhere and then shipped over somewhere. Like, you know, some of the mm. fish you get in the supermarkets is seven to twelve days old there because mm. they go on huge trawlers. They catch them. They're out for two weeks sometimes. The trawler. So if you're getting the fish that's caught on the first cut catch, and then chucked into ice and brought away back, so and it all smelled like. Do you know what I mean? You go mm. just do, do it. Do you know, that's what I'd say to anyone. Like, obviously money conscious. Check your budget. Buy. Go to the go shopping to the individuals like you said, grocer, mm. butcher. Speak to them. Say, look, I want I, I want a meal for four people, and I only want to spend a fiver. And they'll say, do you know what? That's what you want to get. And that's when you'll start learning rather than buying these pre-packed chicken breasts or uh, mm. whatever that's been processed, processed, processed. There'll be, there's other ways around things. And it's exciting, if anything. It's a bit more, you know, like you just said about your mum. She wouldn't dream about going and doing the, th the kind of things that our generation now do. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we take, uh, I mean, I take Charlie with us. And, um, and I just think it's education. I know that money is tight for some people and they feel they don't have the choices but they do because as you say if you're brave and you say to the person in the shop this is how much money i've got mm -hmm. and i need to cater for this many people they will help you that's not about that's what we used to, like, i say money that's how i grew up <laughs> that's, how, that's exactly what i was going to say like we we, we ate a very little meat when we were younger anyway just because it was expensive, like, and I'm not because I grew up in the war. We just didn't have a lot of money when we were going there. You're from, not that old, Will. <laughs> no, exactly. But I come from a fairly big family, and you know, meat was a treat, and that's that's how it mm. is, you know. Um, but yeah, you'd go there and you'd, you'd order. My mum would be like, right, this is what we're getting, and you know, from picking out like the biggest potatoes and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly. But it is, she's like, right, get six, six potatoes. Make sure they're jacket potato size because that's your lunch. Do you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Yeah. Um, coming here with like all the little stuff and that was literally how that was just a thing and it's not like i grew up in a fairy tale where we skipped down to the shop like it was just purchasing food wasn't just like chuck it in the bag and pay for exactly. like you've got to pay a bit more attention of what you're buying and why you're buying it and like and, and all of those kind of things so I think and it all, we all got a bit far it all got a bit fast didn't it and a bit out of control i think this time of everyone's taking time and they're maybe reconnecting with their area a little bit more like going back down to the high street and checking out the local farm for a veg box every now and again because it feels mm. good that you're supporting someone local you're getting a bit of a mixed bag of stuff that you've mm. never seen before um and you haven't got to drive to the shop so you're cutting down on your fuel and all of that parking and stuff like that so we're putting a, a tank of petrol in a month or six weeks now mm -hmm. and it used to be like three every three days exactly and you know even that when you talk about sustainability like why drive all the way to wherever your big supermarket is, you know, when you can do, and even central London, there's the uh, Hackney farms, you know, there's little yeah. farms and there's veg boxes and there's people that are bringing stuff into the city in a more sustainable way, more and more and more. And, you know, if you care about it, which we all should, but I don't want to be all preachy, if you care about no, it, chuck it into Google. Like, there's, yeah. <laughs> they're all over the place. Put veg box fish delivery near me sustainable farming in my area whatever they'll be i love that near me i do that all the time i managed to buy a dog putting find me a dog near me <laughs> i mean really <laughs> i do love a bit of google <laughs> find me a dog <laughs> like yeah there's no i mean yeah it's like if you care about it or not i think is the truth yeah. and, I think we all, and you yeah. clearly you clearly yeah. do care and that comes through in your restaurant and i hope lots of people who are watching this will come and visit the restaurant and see the art and buy the art and buy the food and buy your veg boxes and stuff. Yeah. I absolutely love working with you. You know that. And long, long and many years may it continue. Yes. 
Yes, well, Hope yeah. you enjoy working with us too. <laughs> I do, yeah. Thank you so much. And you know, it's just nice. We're on the same page on a, on a lot of things, and you introduced us to some really interesting people. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure. And once we're back open, to welcome you and, and, yeah. and everyone. We'll be doing. We'll be doing another. We're from always wanting to do big, the biggest events we possibly can. Our ethos now is to do the smallest events we possibly yeah. can. And so the curly works perfectly. Tiny, micro. We're calling them micro events. Micro events. Micro events that are just invitation only, and anyone who gets an invite is privileged because you do the cooking and the food. Okay. Even for me, who is the difficultest person <laughs> to feed, as we know on the planet, um, I I get fed really well. Yeah, and it's good fun. It's something different. You know, we love it. It's, it's something different for us to do. As I said, we connect and meet with different people. It's like, yeah, it's really, really cool. It's sure. so, and it's so much fun. So, yeah, it is. Like, we, yeah. we do have a good laugh. Wait. Come on. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you very soon. Take care. Lots of love. And yeah. Um, yeah, I've got to work out how to end the recording now. I'm sure I can work out how to end a recording. <laughs> Big red button. <laughs> it, it's it's not doing it. It's <laughs> stop video. Maybe that's it. No, no more. It must be up here.